Liberty fans, welcome in to the AC of Red Liberty Basketball A Sun Tournament pregame show presented by our guy Jason Porter, covering all of your real estate needs, whether they're residential or commercial in the Lynchburg area. My name is Nick Kirby. I'm joined by my guy Will Matthews. Uh, coming up here on the pregame show, we're going to talk with Paul Nazgan, get his keys to the game. Got interviews from Darius McGee and Kyle Road. Hoping to uh, check in live at uh, Liberty Arena with Chad Hassan. So we have got a jam-packed show as we get you set for Liberty Lipscomb at the top of the hour. Uh, Will, how are you feeling about tonight's game? I'm feeling good. Um, the last time we have not won a conference tournament game was against Radford 2017-2018. So I'm feeling pretty good about it. I'm celebrating early with a little bit of Bojangles tonight. There's there's uh there's not a better way to uh to celebrate than than some some Bojangles. Uh let's go ahead and look a little bit, get you prepped here for the game. Liberty 9 and 0 all time in the A Sun tournament. Never lost an A Sun tournament game. Uh one of just two teams that have won the last 3 conference tournament titles and then Liberty 6 and 3 all time against Lipscomb, at least since joining the A Sun. And then uh, 2 and 0 in the A Sun tournament with both games being in the A Sun championship. But of course, none of that really matters tonight. This is a one and done situation. Uh, I know every year when we get to one of these, uh, I'm sick to my stomach. I can't imagine how a coach goes through this. It's just got to be excruciating. Uh, well, do you kind of feel that same that same pressure? No, I don't. Uh, not for these games like this, not these first round games, but for sure the championship uh, semifinals going into the championship. Yeah, my stomach gets twisted in knots just thinking about what could happen. <laughs> so, but this game, I'm not. I'm not too worried about this game tonight. Um, I think we. I think we're going to be good tonight. But crazier things have happened. Yeah, I, I think I feel good, but I don't know. There's always that 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 doubt, especially when you, you know, I think earlier today there was a team that was like a 13-point favorite and lost, so yeah, it always gets to you. Uh, take a quick look here at the A-Sun tournament bracket. Uh, first round, uh, Central uh, Arkansas won a thriller over Stetson. Uh, Kennesaw State uh, had a big comeback against EKU, and then Florida Gulf Coast and Lipscomb uh, pretty well cruised uh, in their games, I actually caught up with our guy, uh, Paul Nazgan, to get his thoughts on the first round. Naz, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, first, I wanted to ask you what your thoughts were on the first round games. It was kind of surprising. No real upsets, all chalk. What do you think about that? You know, I am surprised a little bit. I, I, in all honesty, I thought there would be at least one upset uh, in that in that round. And again, just we kind of talked about that. You guys have too on on the show about how um, you know on any given night it seemed like in the A Sun this year somebody could could beat somebody. Uh, different teams were hitting their momentum, so um, I, I did kind of was a little bit surprised. And you know, in all honesty, there was some uh, a good amount of 
game minutes last night where it could have gone other ways. But, uh, yeah, interesting. I wanted to ask you uh, specifically about this uh, Lipscomb-North Florida game. I was honestly a little bit surprised that Lipscomb seemed to handle North Florida with ease, and Lipscomb didn't even shoot well, you know, 3 of 15 from from three-pointer. What was your thoughts on this uh, this win from Lipscomb as they uh, move on to play Liberty? Yeah, it was um, – I guess it, it it kind of fits right into um, Lipscomb's narrative and why I kind of think they're kind of dangerous. Um, I, I really feel they're hitting their stride, and I'll get into that a little bit more later. But, um, yeah, North Florida had, it was one of those teams that really got some late momentum, you know, and, and even with those uh, guys, Hendrickson and Placer being out, other guys built some confidence. So I thought they'd come in and, you know, with them, it's always like if they shoot well from three, they're going to be in everything. And, uh, you know, for a while there, Lipscomb was pushing out the margin, but then they made a nice late game run to kind of keep it uh, close within uh, a few possessions. All right. That was our guy, Naz. Looking forward to uh, having him on the call tonight. Let's take a look at the projected starting lineups. Both teams typically use the same starting lineup, so unless something crazy happens, this is what we're going to look forward to tonight. Uh, Liberty, Darius McGee, Vincent, McGow, McDowell, <laughs> Rode, and Robinson, uh, your, uh, your starting five. Uh, real quick, I'll kind of give my key to the Liberty lineup, and then I'll, I'll pass it off to you, Will. Uh, my key is is the other guys, you know, just have to be able to uh, get some shots up, get some good uh, open looks. I, Liberty is significantly better when when Darius Mee doesn't have to shoot a high volume. Um, he's obviously capable of that, and we saw, you know, what he was able to do at the end of the Kennesaw State game. But I think not turning the ball over, uh, a lot of good ball movement, getting a lot of good shots, and and not putting the the weight solely on Darius Mee is the biggest key. What do you think, Will? Yeah, I agree with that. I think McDowell is going to be key today and getting open and getting some, uh, seeing some three pointers go down early. It, you know, I, I referenced Radford a few minutes ago when we opened up. He's the only guy left that played in that game, or for at least from that team. That's kind of wild to think about. Um, so, but all of these guys have been there before, except for uh, Vinzant. So, but I think he's going to be okay. He's got so many leaders around him in this starting lineup. Uh, but yeah, I'm with you. I think if you know if Darius can be freed up to have some good looks, um, but not be solely responsible for all of the offense tonight, I think we have a great chance. Let's take a look at Lipsom's starting lineup. Uh, they uh, have two freshmen in their typical starting lineup: Will Pruitt and Trey Benham. Uh, both guys. Lights out three point shooters. Uh, that's that's their their big game. Uh, both guys shoot pretty well from the free throw line as well. Um, they do have some experience with Parker Hayes and, and uh, Asana Sajula down uh, in the post. Uh, interesting to see how their two freshmen will do tonight. Hopefully, Liberty Arena is uh, live and rocking and, and can make it a uh, a very difficult environment for those two guys. Um, you know, Asana Sajula is going to score. Uh, Maybe the most underrated thing about him is his passing ability. See, if you're watching here, the stat fifth in the NCAA in uh, assist rate for a big guy. That's that's ridiculous. So he's a he's a great passer. I mean, I think that you know, Liberty's just got to try to make it difficult on Hassan. You know, you're not going to shut him down. Um, I think what they can't do is, is is let them you know be moving the ball over the floor and getting open looks from from three. I think that's that's what could kill you. You know, Hassan hitting twos here and there. Yeah, you know what it is, what it is, especially if you're able to make some of them difficult and, you know, maybe he shoots below 60%. What do you think, Will, about the uh, the Lipscomb starting five? Yeah, Sajula is so dangerous because he is such a great passer. I mean, he gets up at the top of the key and you think, okay, good, he's not around the basket. But then all of a sudden they've got somebody cutting to the basket and he just is able to overlook everybody on the defense, find that person, they kick it out for three. Um, so, yeah, but – to your point, um, as far as their freshmen and the environment at Liberty Arena, I hope we can maybe get kind of some kind of an update about kind of what it looks like over there. <clears throat> but yeah, Coach McKay always says that you know a good crowd is worth four to six points. So hopefully it's it's rocking tonight. Yeah, I I totally I think even most of the 
you know, advanced statistics. If you look at like home environments, it, it definitely can. So I don't, I don't think that's one of those like, you know, fluffy stats. I mean, I think that's, that's a legit, uh, a legit thing. Uh, we're going to talk more. We have uh, some more of the, my talk with uh, Paul Nazgan coming up. Uh, also an interview from uh, Kyle Road and Darius McGee. Uh, but first here's Jason Porter and Legacy Realty. Uh, I'm with Legacy Realty and I've been in full-time real estate now for about uh, coming up on five years. I was an assistant uh, or associate athletic director over at LU and in athletics, obviously, for uh, for almost uh, seven years, I guess, in charge of sports medicine and was doing real estate on the side and kind of had a great opportunity to do a transition and move over to uh, full-time real estate now. And it's just been uh, it's been great. Had a chance to continue to forge my relationships with uh, Liberty Athletics and uh, some of our coaches and graduate assistants that I uh, hired back in the day are now full-time staff members. And so been serving them uh, through athletics and through real estate as well, which has been a lot of fun and uh, working residential real estate as well as commercial real estate help a lot of investors too and uh develop real estate portfolios and uh, help people make some passive income through a blazing hot market right now so it's a lot of fun all right our thanks as always to jason porter and his support of a sea of red all right more with my conversation with naz here's naz's keys to the game tonight them, you know, talking about why I think they're a little dangerous. So they're the number four seed, but that's deceiving. And here's why. So a big portion of their season, they were missing two key components. One is all conference selection, Asana Sajula. I should say three time first teamer, Asana Sajula. He was out a lot of games with, with injury. And so again, they're losing games, but he's not in there. Also Trey Benham, uh, a guy, another starter who had been out with injuries. So they never had their full complement of guys to really, you know, work together and gel and things like that. The other thing is coach Lenny Acuff uh, really kind of experimented with his lineup way longer into the season than most coaches do. And so I thought with the injuries and that, that they kind of set them off there. So they come in six and 10 on the year, but again, without those guys and being out for injuries, uh, that's why. And so here's the thing they got back. And I might've said this, you know, at, on the Liberty broadcast, when Lipscomb was, was up here in town a few weeks ago, I thought they had just enough time to get everybody back to really gel and unify. And I think that's what they're doing. I really think they're playing their best basketball right now. Um, and that's what makes them so dangerous. Uh, and my keys are this number one, uh, and I don't do this a lot, when I make my game keys, it's very rare that I'll make a player a game key, but without a doubt, Asana Sajula is a game key in his in himself. Like, not only does he score, I mean, it's you know, his numbers are great, you know, 15, 9, 5 assists. Um, but here's another thing: he was on the all-academic team. He's a smart guy, great basketball IQ. They run everything they do, runs through Asana Sajula. They'll post him up and just get him touches right off the bat. He's a great interior player, strong, great footwork, great moves. But then you'll see, they'll bring him out to the high post. They'll run cutters off of him. They'll use him for ball screen so guys can run off of him and, and attack the, the rim. And they'll also just get him touches up there, and he is a phenomenal passer. So between his direct scoring and him getting touches, everything runs through him. Liberty has got to do a job all night on him, battle him in the post. You know, you'll see Liberty will throw different defense. Watch. Sometimes they'll double him in the post. Sometimes they'll single him just to keep him off balance. They got to do the job down there. And then when he comes up out of the high post, they've got to just bother him, not give him free looks. They got to really do a great job when he's, when he's ball screening and all that kind of stuff. Uh, my second game key is points in the paint. Liberty's got to win the paint. Here's the thing. Lipscomb does not rely a lot on the three. They're only like 34% from three. Uh, they only made three of them the other night. That's not a big portion of their offense. They are a traditional, uh, you know, score from two. So Asana Sajula scores 28 points last, last night against uh, North Florida, the other night against North Florida. They get 26 other points in the paint, some fast breaks or cutters they got guys that like to go off the dribble 
and utilize that 15 to 17 foot range or get into the paint off of those ball screens. So um, it's not a team that's going to try to come in and, and, and match Liberty uh, from the three point line. They are very comfortable. They got a really good system. They got guys that really do a great job backdoor cutting and passing. So those are the keys. Asana Sajala, it's going to be a 40 minute effort on him. And then we got to win the paint uh, uh, somehow. And again, with Liberty, a key is always if we shoot well from three, we're going to be in great I'm shape. I call this my X factor for the game tonight. Don't forget, we beat them in two championship games one down at Lipscomb and one the following year. In the Vine Center, do not think they've not forgotten that we have stolen, we have taken two championships from them, and Asana Sajala was part of both of those. And I'm telling you, they would love nothing more than to come up tomorrow tonight in the arena and steal one from the number one seed, Liberty. All right, that was our guy Paul Nazgan with just some incredible keys to the game. Can't wait to uh, hear him and our guy Matt on the. Uh, Liberty broadcast in just about 15 minutes, just about 15 minutes away. Uh, up next, I got an interview last night that uh, Chad did with Kyle Road and Darius McGee. I think it's definitely like business as usual, but with the added like excitement. Like this is what you dream about as a kid, being able to play in the postseason. Uh, but still with that Liberty mindset of taking it one game at a time and uh, being who we are. So I think there's definitely a buzz and uh, just an appreciation for uh, what we have ahead. We do have an opportunity in front of us, but guys are, you know, pretty much treating it as an ordinary day, just trying to stack the days leading up into it. Going back to the overtime game uh, last Saturday, man, that was just unbelievable. And uh, I don't know if your feet have come down. I don't think ours have yet as fans. That was just uh, such an unbelievable display and uh, everything like that. What was the – Do you, as you think back to that real quick, what was the, what was kind of the game turn? And JV in that steal, Zabian really – uh, like aware of being able to give a timeout and then let Darius do his thing. I thought it was pretty cool. Like we're down. Darius hits the first free throw. Coach takes Shiloh off the line because he has to trust in D that he's going to hit the second. When most coaches probably would have put two people on the line, like thinking he might, if he misses, we got to get the rebound. So I don't know. I just thought it was a pretty cool moment uh, when D hit those free throws and going into overtime, it gave us, I think, more confidence. Darius, is anything – clicked for you specifically these last few weeks in the ebbs and flows of the game you got to recognize what's going on and that's that awareness i was talking about like you got to be able to be aware of what they're what they're doing what they're trying to take away from me you got to be able to find solutions like our coaching staff coach BJ, even coach uh pierre on the defensive side like we're always communicating back and forth throughout the game but what we see players and coaches in like solutions we can you know find in the mix of the game as long as you're relentless and you're pursuing on both ends of the floor, it's, it's bound to crack open. So you just got to keep going full throttle and not taking your foot out of the gas. You know, Kyle, I have the same question for you, man. No, I, I definitely uh, would agree with D. I I think we were we were going in. We had a lot of new pieces. And so kind of just, um, commu- like you said, the communication was huge. So like just finding spots uh, and making adjustments. I mean, D attracts so much attention. That, that probably has made me way better player looking than I am uh, just because how much it's me attracts. But now 100%, man, like we've grown so much as a team and in the wins and losses. Like, I think that's one of the most exciting things about the season is we we've learned from uh, previous losses, wins, and uh, now get a chance to put it all together. Having some of those last couple of games where we tripped up a little bit at the end and, and, and came up with a couple of losses, what did you guys take out of that? Being in those moments where the game is going back and forth, it just gives you experience going forward. So when you're in a similar situation, you understand what to do and what not to do, what things you definitely want to take away. And, like, the points of emphasis are totally different. So I think, like, even though we tripped up and lost, I think it was good, especially for the younger guys to, you know, have that experience, but now going forward, they'll have confidence in those moments. You know, they'll relay on the habits that they already built so they can just lock in into the moment and execute. Do you have anything you'd want to say to Flames Nation headed into the tournament? Uh, first, I would appreciate you guys. And as far as Flames Nation, I've been here for four years. It seemed like it's a long time, but it went by fast. So each year, it seemed like the fan base has just gotten stronger and stronger. And to hear how loud and supportive they are during the game, especially these last couple home games, has been tremendous and we definitely need all that energy and support going into this tournament hopefully we can host as many games as possible but you know especially this thursday we need everybody there 
100 percent. i appreciate you guys support uh flames nation it's, it's been an awesome ride and looking to keep it going this week for sure all right that was an awesome interview from our guys darius mcgee and cal road who in just about 10 minutes are gonna take the floor and Hopefully get Liberty to 10-0 and all time in A-Sun play. Uh, well, I did want to real quick run through tonight's uh, A-Sun games, and we'll make a pick for Liberty as well. Uh, as you see here, we have the the spreads as well, at least the, the Kin Palm lines. Uh, first, first game, we got FGCU at Bellarmine. Bellarmine is a three-point favorite in this one. I actually like FGCU in this game. I, I like them to, to, to not just cover, but to also win this game. What about you, Will? Yeah, I think we we both have them in our championship game in our predictions against Liberty. <clears throat> I think it'll be a good game. Um, but I'm looking at Florida Gulf Coast and thinking they're they're probably they probably should be the favorite in this one. Yeah, absolutely. Uh we'll save Liberty Lipscomb for the end here. Uh Jacksonville 13 point favorites over Central Arkansas. I don't think there's any way Jacksonville covers that 13 point spread, just especially with like the, the pace that they play that that's a wild number. Uh, I think they're going to win, uh, but I think it'll be close at least for a while. What about you? Will? yeah, I was going to say, I expect that one to kind of, I, I expect Jacksonville to win as well. Um, that seems like it's one of those games that either way, um, if central Arkansas comes out strong, that that's something that they could pull away from against Jacksonville and also vice versa as well. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm looking at Jacksonville thinking they're probably going to win. Um, but I, I'm pulling for Central Arkansas in that one. I, ho- I hope they can pull it out. Absolutely. Oh, that fun environment uh, on a yeah. Tuesday night for sure. And then uh, Jacksonville State, eight-point favorites over Kennesaw. I definitely think that Kennesaw State is going to make Jacksonville State sweat a little bit in this one. Um that's a team that, you know, just came off a huge comeback win over EKU, got that that big first A-Sun win um, under their belt, at least the first since Liberty's been in the conference. Um, I definitely think they're going to be playing some confidence. I think that eight-point spread is probably right about where the game ends with Jacksonville State ultimately winning. But I definitely think Kennesaw is going to make it uncomfortable. What do you think, Will? Yeah, I mean, Jacksonville State is definitely beatable. They're a beatable one seed. Um <clears throat> So, yeah, I, I'm with you. I think Kennesaw State is probably going to come out with a lot of confidence. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Was that win against Eastern Kentucky their first ever conference tournament victory uh, in the A-Sun? I, I don't know. I'm not sure uh, if it's their first ever, but it's definitely their first since Liberty's been in. Uh, yeah. They, they, didn't even yeah quali- they didn't even qualify for one of the tournaments that Liberty was in because they right. only had the top, I think, eight get in. So yeah. yeah, I was thinking maybe one of them said that during the game. I wasn't sure about that. Um, or maybe I could be making that up, but I think Jacksonville state is going to win it. Um, but yeah, I'm pulling for Kennesaw state for sure. Yeah. Uh, we'll come back here in just a minute with our, our last uh, thoughts and a prediction for uh, Liberty Lipscomb, but uh, our guy Naz gave us some picks as well. Florida Gulf Coast Bellerman. Who do you got in that one? Probably goes without saying for <laughs> that. They're all going to be good games. Um, again, I just think uh, I going with Florida Gulf coast. Um, and again, Bellerman is really skilled, and, and I think offensively they're going to give FGCU some fits. I don't know that they're ready. Uh, they're, they're big fella Samuel in the paint. I think will really. Uh, I think he's going to have a dominating performance, and I think that combined with you know Tavian Dunn Martin, I think it's going to be a little too much for Bellerman. Jacksonville Central Arkansas. Jacksonville is a thirteen point favorite according to Ken Palm. That is a crazy high line what do you think about that one yeah i think they uh again it was kind of nice to see central arkansas win that one last night good for them brand new in the in the a sun um yeah i I really think jacksonville is is one of those teams you know we've talked about it on the on our show you guys have too they they could they they could be one that could win the whole thing so i think they uh i won't say win it handily but but i think it's a they have a little cushion of a few possessions and they win theirs and then the the top overall seed actually has a five point less favorite than Liberty or Jacksonville. Jacksonville State eight point favorite against Kennesaw State. Naz, do you think Kennesaw State could give uh, Jacksonville a, a scare here? I do. I really do. And and again, we uh, we all saw that. You know, they came into the arena and had a great man. They put on a great effort on Senior Day, 
and uh, they were hitting threes and played with great composure, uh, didn't kind of self-destruct. You could see the growth of that program. And then last night, you know, they got off to a slow – or the other night, they got off to a really slow start and showed some real character and growth, fought back, took the lead. And so, again, I think they're playing really well. I think, you know, they had – they're, they're kind of – feeling like this is our chance. They have to host a game uh, for the first time ever in the tournament. And I think, again, same thing. They got nothing to lose. They can go on the road and be world beaters if if they win tonight. All right, that was our guy, Naz. Looking so forward, we're about five minutes away. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm shaking over here. Uh, Will, I'll let you go first. Final thoughts on this game and uh, your prediction. I'm going to say that it's going to be a close game that I think Liberty holds on to. I think they win by a margin of 10 or less. And I think it's going to come down kind of that margin only comes down to the end in free throws. Uh, you know, with Kennesaw, I mean, uh, excuse me, Lipscomb trying to hold on and to um, stay in the game. But, you know, I, I, I hope we come out strong right to begin with and we don't let up on the gas pedal and that we're shooting hot, um, and we can kind of see something different from this Liberty team that we've seen in the last couple of weeks uh, where they've they've struggled some. So we'll see. Yeah, I'm hoping that extra rest that they got really does them a huge solid this week, and they come out and they, uh, you know, are, are laser-focused and, and, you know, not not turning the ball over. Uh, for me, if, if Liberty doesn't turn the ball over and – you know, has, you know, pretty decent ball movement. I think they could cover that 13 point spread. I don't think that's impossible. I think they can, they could easily win this by double digits. Uh, Lipscomb's just honestly not that good. Now Lipscomb, you know, they're playing with confidence right now. Liberty comes out. They, they throw the ball all around. Uh, you know, they, they, you know, don't play lockdown defense. I think it could be a really tight game and you know, we're really nervous in the final minutes, but even still, still got Darius McGee at the end. So, you know, no matter what happens, you know, definitely got the the best player on the floor in, in crunch time. So we'll see what happens. Well, hope you guys enjoyed the pregame show. Obviously, if you're watching this, you're going to turn on ESPN Plus at 7. I don't need to tell you that. But we'll be right back post game. Uh, as soon as the game ends, uh, we are hoping to go live and uh, get a live uh, post game reaction from Richie McKay and maybe some of the players uh, from our guy Chad on the scene. So for Will. I'm Nick. Go Flames.